Hello guys, welcome to Mortic, Morticon 2021. Today we have a uh, speaker, Nick Vinov. Let's welcome to him. Hi. Hi. Let me introduce Nick uh, very shortly. Nick is a CTO at the Drop Solid and he is leading the technical team there in a combination with the R&D team. And Nick has been involved in Drupal open source community over the past like uh, 12 years and he has amazing experience like uh, i'll hand it over to the nick okay good afternoon everybody or morning depending on what time zone you're in uh, this is my second session of today um earlier today i had a session about uh, personalization this is a much more in-depth technical talk about composerization in Motic 4. Um, for your information, I'm following the Q&A chat in real time. Um, uh, I'm really happy to answer any questions at the time that you're actually asking them, as I'd like this to be an interactive session, uh, just to give you as much information as possible of what was done uh, by the team in Motic 4. Um, so at the end of the session that you understand why this was done and how you can actually utilize this. Okay. Um, so if you just want to say hi in the chat and let me know that you're here, uh, feel free to do so. Uh, and if not, uh, enjoy the ride. Okay. Um, maybe some information about myself. Uh, so indeed, uh, I've been active in the, um, the, the Drupal project and the Drupal project, um, has gone through that same transformation of going in um, like maintenance of uh, updates and etc using the composer php uh, package manager now what is that um, it, it actually is a means of trying to get all your dependencies or docs in a row and understanding what depends on what um, and also that allows you to do updates on a gradual way of your dependencies but maybe also to install plugins or teams in terms of Motic um, in your project or in your customized Motic instance. Um, and uh, let's take a look at the, the situation. Um, we'll also talk about how we tackled that uh, conversion, the problems that we faced, uh, the solutions that were created, and what you should take into account when starting with Motic 4, um, and also how you can help uh, and how you can use this. So, how great would it be if we can update Motic using Composer while keeping our custom plugins, security preferences, and more? Today in Motic 3, there is already a Composer file. Um, but if you try to run an update on that Composer file, it actually updates only the dependencies. So um, it doesn't allow you easily to um, install a plugin or a team using Composer and also keep that updated. So uh, while it was possible to add stuff to your vendor directory, and I'll show you how that looks like, it was not possible to move the vendor directory out of the web route. Um, so there were quite some complicated problems, and um, we tried to work around it in, uh, yeah, in, in custom GitHub repositories, but it all went into that same flow of hmm, all the custom stuff that we've done somehow um, it always keeps getting overridden because of the structure and how Motic today works with Composer. And uh, this is a, maybe just like a, a mini joke, but one does not simply run Composer update. Uh, it's a very, very scary process if you don't fully trust what's actually going on. Okay. Um, so let's take a look at what was done. This is the end result of what we have today in Motic 4. Okay. Um, so how you start with this, uh, there is um, a Motic slash recommended project. And there's a single command that you can run using Composer that builds up the entire folder structure from wherein you can actually install Motic 4. What it does is it gets all the dependencies, all the teams, all the plugins that are necessary. Um, it installs it using Composer 2. Uh, you can see it places it in the right folder, so either in the plugins folder or in the teams folder. Um, it takes in lots of files to make the directory, and this is then the end result. And let me pause here for a second. This is very different from how Motic uh, Tree looks like today if you just clone it from or get it from uh, a release. 
you can see that everything that is necessary for the end user to see, which is the, the person browsing the, the Mautic uh, web application, is here in, in this instance in the doc root folder. This is configurable, so you can also call it the app folder, the web folder, um, whatever you'd like your Apache or Nginx to point at. And um, everything that is not necessary for the end user or for the, the Apache application or the Nginx application to serve to the end user should not be in there, which is the case for the vendor directory, the bin, so the console, um, and yeah, a couple of these other files. So if we forward, you can see that those sensitive things are actually outside of that uh, package. And here you can see if, oh, sorry, uh, here you can see that the um, inside the Docker or the, the web folder, everything that is necessary for Mautic to run from a web application point of view is actually in here, including all these plugins. So let's take a look. Also, the themes are in there. Um, and it also allows you now to compose or require a custom theme or a custom plugin, and it will place it directly in the correct folder. You can even uh, create a custom folder for your plugin and Composer won't overwrite it. Uh, so you can do custom development uh, in uh, an easier way. And you can see, you can install it. It works exactly the same way. The um, uh, configuration folders are actually adjusted so that also the logs, uh, so the, the logs of the, the application are outside of the web folder. So you cannot browse your logs using the Chrome or any kind of web browser, which today, is the case that you could do it um, if it doesn't respect the HD access files. So there were quite some security issues as well with the old situation um, that can be resolved if you use the recommended project of Mautic uh, 4. So these were a couple of the best practices um, that are out there on the, yeah, on the internet that says uh, how to do application development, including the Symphony best practices. Eh? So Drupal uh, as a open source community that has this as uh, best practices. Also Symphony has this for web applications. It only made sense that uh, Mautic also follows this and not only just made sense um, for auditing security uh, yeah, risks, um, it's actually yeah, necessary, okay? So um, upgrading dependencies and the subsystem uh, like the plugins and the teams, yeah, it should be done by Composer. That wasn't possible before. Um, to place your vendor directory outside of the web route, eh, it was impossible before. There were some certain hard-coded paths in Mautic Tree that didn't allow the, the vendor directory to be outside of the doc route. So you could hack it, but then you would lose all custom teams and plugins and, and yeah, the, the developer experience on that front wasn't very good. Um, also, if you wanted to test uh, a feature that was available as uh, a certain uh, patch on GitHub or somewhere else, it was nearly impossible to apply it and then update the Mautic application and keep your change applied. Um, this is a workflow that now is possible. So you can keep track of the customizations that you do to Mautic, the core components, or even to custom plugins or any of those others without losing the opportunity to keep your Mautic updated. Um, so that's a really nice added functionality. And then uh, also um, this uh, whole functionality was necessary to enable plugins to be installed from a marketplace uh, like interface and to stay compatible with Composer. It required Composer 2 and deep integration. So uh, if you want within Mautic to enable a plugin or install a plugin that came from an external source, yeah. You also wanted Mautic itself from an application point of view to call Composer, so everything stays in sync and you have the seamless end user experience, but also you have a really good developer experience. And so that was the situation. How did we tackle this? Um, and I know also uh, Rahul is in this uh, talk, or I, I think he was, yeah. Uh, together with uh, Rahul, we tried to figure out how to tackle this best. and. Um, it was quite challenging eh? because everything that Composer does depends on um, a packages like repository where it can find all the other packages. Um, basically, that meant that we had to simulate how the future should look like for all these different plugins. 
And the screenshot that you can see here is that um, I locally simulated uh, many of the packages that um, yeah, needed to be created and needed to be changed in order to test this whole kind of recipe-like change. So that proof of concept was set up. And I think uh, Rahul can contest, yeah, that's not uh, really easy to get started with as it, it really uh, yeah, messes with your mind. Now, um, we also had a proof of concept of scaffolding of files. Um, and I might need to explain this a little bit. Now, there is Motic slash Motic, and I'll show you the, the code in a bit, um, which is the, the whole repository of Motic. But then you also have uh, Motic slash app. Yeah, so the, the app folder of Motic is actually where Motic core is situated. In uh, cases where you want the vendor folder to be outside of that web route, uh, you need to separate those folders from each other. And that also means that everything that is necessary to run Motic should actually live in that app folder. So in the, the, the Motic core folder. And that also means that to build up that directory from inside out, you need to have the concept of scaffolding. So that also means that you can then configure your, um, for example, uh, bin.console should live in the project root, which you see here. And oh, let me uh, enable the pointer. And here you see that the console we actually put outside of the web root, which is in the project root. This is all developer-like files. And then everything that should be accessible like HD access files or maybe index dev or index, uh, we actually place in the web root. This is configurable uh, for every project on its own. So you decide how that structure looks like and you decide whether or not you make a customized robot.txt or you use the default one. So this is also customizable on a per project basis. Um, we also looked into, okay, how should Composer itself look like? Um, and then we found out that uh, Motic slash core was already taken um, because at certain point, I think it was registered on packages, uh, which was quite funny. So, uh, well, funny and frustrating. So we needed to use another name. Um, so the name for the core components of Motic is now uh, core-lib. Um, we had several calls uh, just to decide on, on naming things because naming things is complicated. Now, all of this stuff was proof of concept on GitHub. And you can see uh, there was uh, a Motic project, a Motic finder, Motic core composer scaffold. These are all like small projects necessary for this whole structure to work um, to ultimately be able to install Motic from GitHub as you know it today or allow like customizability so that the vendor folder is out there and all the other uh, best practices can actually be used. Um, so we needed to take into account both options um, and allow uh, a lot of flexibility. So we tried it with Motic 3, uh, learned our lessons and applied this to Motic 4. And you can see uh, for Motic 3, you can do this, but it's not ideal. Um, it doesn't allow for custom plugins to really live there. Um, and it does a lot of hackery um, that shouldn't be necessary. So I don't recommend this. Uh, I do recommend the 4.x one. But I do want to say for the proof of concept, I really had a lot of help from the, the Drupal community. Uh, so thank you, Drupal and open source. So I could read in on, on why they did that change, on how they did that change, on what iterations they actually went through. So we could speed up that process of composerizing uh, Motic 4. Let's take a look at the problems that we faced. Eh? So simulating the real world using Packages and Composer was a real struggle. I'm, I'm really happy that it's in production now um, because I don't remember how to simulate it again. Um, so I, I don't uh, recommend this. And uh, maybe I should have documented this better. Um, but for all problems, I'll refer you to Rahul. Uh, um, no, uh, this was a really like a struggle as it's such an interconnected uh, thing with dependency management, uh, with versionings. Um, that that makes it actually complex. Taking to the developer experience into account, it also made life a bit more complex. Um, as you saw, we actually have dependencies uh, on all these plugins and teams, so they live as separate repositories. However, 
um, we wanted the Matic slash Matic GitHub repository to be the core repository where all the pull requests um, should actually happen and it should be seamless. Yeah? So um, I'll show you that as well in, in a bit. The, the plugins folder should at every commit uh, be synchronized to another repository so that it could live on its own as a dependency uh, within the packages, dependency management, um, and should always stay in sync with each other, including releases and etc. So that was yeah quite problematic also to simulate. And also versioning is hard uh, and continuous integration of all these components uh, to make sure that if you make a pull request against Motic slash Motic, that everything works as expected. That's also, also really tricky, um, but it's solved, okay? So collaborating on these proof of concepts was quite hard. Um, a lot of it was in my basket, as you know, eh? because things were locally, it was really hard to actually delegate that and I had a hard time documenting where I was at. Um, I'm not sure how we could do that better or different the next time, but I'm welcoming uh, any kind of suggestion. And uh, moving things into the Matic slash workspace, which is the github.com slash Matic, was also tricky while keeping things tested. Uh, as you saw, it came from my workspace, the Nick Finhoff uh, GitHub uh, workspace to the Matic workspace. Yeah, try making sure that all these dependencies stay in sync um, and that somehow um, you can still keep this tested and make sure that external people can uh, also test this was tricky. But let's take a look at the solutions that we created. Um, right now, these are the projects that exist. And I'll take a look uh, together with you at this recommended project. You can see there is a branch called 4.x. And there is a single command, as you saw in the video, that you can use to create a project. And after that, you can actually use Composer to require a plugin. It's fully Composer 2 uh, compatible and has support for um, plugins and themes. It creates the media directory um, and it allows you to update Matic Core. How can you run Matic Core updates? Basically, you can run this command and it brings you from if Matic 4 actually gets released from Matic 4.0 to Matic 4.1. Uh, so the, the regular update path, as you knew it, um, should no longer be used if you're running Matic with Composer. Um, this is still a task in uh, to do to figure out uh, how to do either one or the other and to disable updating from the UI or make sure that the update in the UI actually uses Composer. Um, if you take a look at the Composer file, and I'll make it a bit bigger, you can see that there is quite some information here. Uh, so it requires Composer installers, and then it requires certain packages uh, like project message and scaffolding, as I explained the scaffolding. It includes the core application of Matic, and then all the plugins and themes that you like in the project. If you don't want certain themes to be included in the project, you can actually remove them here and they won't be available um in your project so you can actually limit the functionality that you'd like in terms of plugins and teams out of the box without any issue no need to delete anything and updating matic will work as expected so that's a big big difference in terms of um yeah making matic your own uh, towards your customer so um what else was created um there was this core lib and this is actually um, a full sync from the app folder in Matic. And so if we take a look at Matic Matic, this folder, everything that is in, in here also exists here. It's exactly the same. It's fully synchronized, all the branches, all the tags, it's fully synchronized. And that's the core application of Matic. And you can see, and it also has a composer file, which is this core lib name. It's also available in the packages. And you can see this is also where all the dependencies um, are created for production purposes. And so not the development packages. Um, there's still the, the modic scaffolding, but this can be overridden on a per project basis. Um, you can see that this was actually used here in the core lib. Um, so that's where the package comes from. 
the tricky part is that um, because of the branching strategy that Modic uses, which is a discussion that we can have tomorrow, um, we need to mimic the dev features branch as 4.0. I'll explain more about that uh, in a bit. Oh, I need to plug in my power. Okay, so that's uh, what we used. Why didn't we use Multicore? And it's also actually in Composer to not use Multicore. I explained to you it was already used um, because we were like as a community were a bit too eager in the past to register those namespaces, and once it's registered, you cannot reuse it. Um, so be careful and taking in a name. What else was created? This is the core composer scaffold. This is actually the, um, the plugin that is, uh, it's a composer plugin that is uh, used for the whole scaffolding of the configuration in the composer file. There's nothing that you will ever um, yeah, need to, to do with this plugin other than requiring it. And then um, when you want to uh, customize it, you can actually customize it in your composer.json file itself of your project. And so once you create the project of Composer, that one Composer file is yours to use um, permanently. And you can see uh, it's used uh, there. Here, as I explained to you, it's used in the web root or in location, but also in the core lib. This is something that by default is there, but you can override it. Um, another thing is because everything needs to live in the core directory, the assets and files now live in uh, Motic app assets instead of Motic media. Um, and this is maybe something that I also wanted to uh, explain. Where do we have it here? Here in the, the Motic repository right now, we have a media folder. And in the media folder, there are some static images like uh, the Facebook button, uh, which is like this. Um, but it's difficult because these files should not be uh, edited by the end user. They're actually part of the Mautic core setup, um, and they should always be there. Um, so uh, the suggestion is that they actually should go into the assets folder of the core application, as you can see, as images. And you can see that the same images are also there. So right now, those files are in two places. Um, but there is actually a pull request uh, that um, only keeps one place in the end, and it should be the assets folder. The media folder should never be updated or changed um, if Motic is installed, like from the moment that Motic is installed. The media folder is something that is editable by the end user. The assets folder is a static folder with static images. And so we need to make a distinction between files that are part of Motic and could be updated in the next update of Matic and files that are actually user generated or user uploaded. So there's still quite some work uh, necessary to do that. Another thing is that um, there was a Matic installer plugin, um, but to make it a lot easier, we actually integrated and made a pull request on the composer installers that allows um, a Matic core, a Matic plugin and a Matic team to be installed and placed in the right directory. So you can see that this is a change that happens. And so by default, the plugins go to plugins and the name of the plugins, the teams to the teams and the core to the app. And then there's a whole um, yeah, configuration change or code change necessary to support actually plugins and teams to go into the right uh, folder. And I'll explain this with the Grips.js builder. This is a plugin. Um, yeah, Matic plugin creates just builder, but you can actually also find this. This is the same thing. Uh, it syncs from the the plugins folder in Matic Matic. You can see the Grips Jazz builder. Button. I'll stay here for um, demo purposes. And each of the plugins and each of the teams actually now have a composer file. The composer file of a plugin, and also if you want to create plugins for Matic for yourself, uh, should contain at the bare minimum a name, the type. Um, and um, if the, the folder name does not equal the install directory name, you can actually supply the install directory name here. Why is this important? Is because Motic actually does auto detection based on the folder name for the plugin, and it should be the same as the class name. Uh, so um, 
all of these are now also committed to packages. Um, and we no longer need any other thing or any other customizability. Uh, oh, sorry. So here you can see we require Composer installer. We can just require any kind of repository and it will auto detect where that plugin needs to go. Either the plugins go to plugins, the core lib actually goes to the app folder and the teams go to the teams folder. Um, so it requires less knowledge of Composer to do the right thing. Okay, how did we make the synchronization happen? Um, this is um, something that Root is actually managing. Um, and it's a service that's called Subtree Split. And Subtree Split um, takes basically a folder of a specific repository, like one of the plugins, and it like moves all the changes that happen instantly to another repository so it can be used in packages. Um, you can see here in packages, all these plugins have their own registration. Um, also have their own repository, but everything is still managed from a single repository, which is called Motic Motic. And so this was quite complex to set up, um, at least to find how to set it up once uh, it was there. Um, it was actually quite easy to use uh, yeah, this service. And then there's like an enable or disable um, for, I think, each folder uh, towards another repository. For more. Detailed information, I'll refer you to Root Cheesley. Now, um, this was quite a lot already, uh, but it's all uh, actually committed to Motic 4. Um, but there's still some problems remaining. Yeah. So assets and files, they live in the app slash assets folder. They still also live in the media folder, as I showed you. Um, there is a pull request here um, to make sure that there's only one canonical place for the image or for static files. Um, and we'd love to get it in before uh, Motic 4 is released. Now, um, this is a little outdated because I think today or yesterday, a pull request was merged. Um, but there's still one problem remaining as well in the Composer file. And that's actually the, um, the fact that there is a repository here uh, that is custom. So to give you a bit of background, um, this repository was created um, because there was some change that was necessary on a dependency. Um, but it's not ideal because this repository doesn't follow all the security updates that happen on that dependency and actually adds strain to the, main, the maintainability of Motic 4. So we want this to be removed. Um, and if we remove this, we can also remove this remove git submodules dependency which is a very scary thing to remove folders on a Composer update. Now, why is that the case? Um, if you add a dependency like this, uh, like a, a Git repository as your source instead of packages, it actually does a Git clone and it gets it to the right branch. But that also means that if you want to commit all your dependencies and, and the entire folder in your own um, version control repository in, in Git, um, it will give you conflicts. So that's why on every update, we remove all kinds of submodules uh, if it exists. So that is still necessary to uh, fix. And then also naming things is hard. Uh, so that's the branching problem. Um, on the image on the right, you can see that a plugin actually requires Motic 4, which could very well be the case that a plugin is only compatible with Motic 4. Now, um, that means that we have to hack something like this together uh, to say that the development branch is actually uh, on a semantic versioning um, level equal to four or higher. And so we point it equal to 4.0. If we use a branch like 4.x, um, we shouldn't have, uh, like this is no longer necessary, but then because then it follows the um, semantic versioning constraints and it knows, okay, this is at least four, but it's the development version of it, but it's compatible. Um, so again, uh, for that, tomorrow we have a discussion on branch naming, uh, but I highly suggest that we stop using the features branch and start using, um, yeah, actually uh, number branches or number development branches. Uh, and then the tricky part is, do you go into um, 4.0.0, 4.0.x, or 4.x, so that's something that we'll be discussing tomorrow. 
And releasing a new version of Matic will be tricky right now because it's not automated and also because of this weird naming thing. All of these dependencies on a release should be uh, pointing to the stable release at that point. So the recommended project needs to be in sync with the release. And that's still something that we also need to discuss how to do this either manually or automatically um, so that you can always pick the recommended project for the specific version of Matic that you want to support, which is not the development version, uh, so that you can update uh, on your own pace uh, and change all these dependencies uh, yourself. But also plugins should not uh, be updated, only the Matic core should be updated. So a plugin could be on version 1.x or, or doesn't really have to follow the, the 4.x uh, branch strategy. All of that stuff, I'm happy to explain tomorrow, um, but it also fits into the semantic versioning uh, approach and the standard that you can find online. So do you want to help fix this? Uh, please join us Thursday at the, let's discuss the branch naming strategies and, and the whole release management um, yeah, hell that this kind of creates. I'm happy to discuss. If you see any other problems or issues, please file an issue in the forum or uh, in GitHub if you have a pull request uh, to fix this or in the iComposer support uh, channel in Slack. And if you see a bug, please file a pull request against Matic. It will, as you saw, automatically propagate to the respective repositories um, so that your developer experience stays uh, as smoothly as possible and keep the barrier for uh, contributions as low as possible. So how to use this? It's as easy as this. Uh, create project, Matic recommended project. You take a version, could be stable or development. Right now, it's only development as we don't have a stable version of Matic yet. And you pick the directory uh, where Matic should be installed. And that's it. Everything else will be managed for you. Um, it will create a folder. It will create uh, everything inside that folder. And then you're uh, good to go and customize it as you wish. You can also create your own recommended project or per company based recommended project to create a factory of Matics that are specific to your use case. So with that, um, I think that uh, might already have been quite a lot. So I'm happy to answer any questions that you have either here or in Slack for the remaining time. Uh, thanks, Nick. I think uh, not much a uh, question. I have one question because I was uh, working in uh, in one of uh, the custom plugin creator. So, what are the best practices you will suggest for the custom plugin cre creation? Like, um, well, best practices um, like do whatever you need to do in terms of creating the plugin itself. Uh, but you do need to follow. Um, let me get the plugin here. You need to follow a similar pattern as the official plugins that Matic have. Um, so everything that's necessary here, you'd need a composer file. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, so you need the name, you need the install directory name to be compliant so it can be discovered. And then okay. I suggest that you actually start with a branch name called 1.x, um, which is actually your first version, uh, which is in, in line and in the bottom, you say which PHP version and which Matic version that you're compatible with. Um, if you today create a plugin for Matic, there's no way that you can actually restrict that plugin from working to like a specific PHP version or a core version, because oftentimes it's get cloned into the plugins folder and then Matic is updated with the button in the interface, which is actually not ideal and will cause a lot of conflict. So this composer file is your little Bible or whatever you want to call it uh, to say, this is my restrictions and this is where I uh, wanted my plugin to work for. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for the information. It was a good uh, informative session about to know about that. Just want to understand like uh, what are the uh, uh, use cases for the recommended project? Uh, which uh, was showcasing that one. Like, what are the use case? Uh, I just want to understand it because I was, it was totally new for me. Uh, so I just want to understand that. So uh, 
maybe let, let's show you why this was so important for, for DropSolid. Um, um, DropSolid doesn't support all the plugins on our platform. Um, so either we actually have, uh, we have to install uh, Motic and then remove the folders, but there was not a really a way to automatically do this. And at least in a way that supported also the whole vendor folder, which is the dependencies, it's a security risk to keep it in the web folder. So if you want all of that um, yeah, natively supported, let me uh, switch here one second. Uh, and I'll show you uh, why this is important for us. We have quite some managed Motics in our platform. And uh, yeah, if it wants to load, we have a way to automatically deploy new Motics. Um, with the recommended project, we can actually uh, now pick Motic. We can pick a profile, which is the recommended project, and it automatically detects which version of PHP does this support. Um, it will not install certain plugins. Um, it will not be available out of the box. It will take in best practices from security um, yeah, out of the box. And the main thing is we don't need to do any customizations in Motic itself. We don't need to patch Motic. We don't need to change any code in Motic. Um, and installing plugins is as easy as doing the Composer require thing. Uh, so uh, like for, this is for us the main use case to make a factory of Motics, um, but also to make customizability to Motic a lot easier and follow security best practices. OK, so you mean that like we, in a recommender project, we can add other uh, uh, open source software also, like to write as, a, as an installer? Yeah, so if um, if you go here and uh, you, you do this, you can install your own plugin with a simple like Composer command. If you have your own plugin either in a private repository or in a public one, as long as Composer can access it, you can install it that way and also keep it updated by running Composer update. Okay. In the past, that wasn't that easy. And the dependencies of your plugin will also be moved into the vendor folder, which is outside of the doc root. So it stays, uh, it follows the best practices at all times and helps you to stay secure. Yeah, okay. thanks for clarifying doubt. Yeah. I think we are uh, good with the session. I think no other question we have. It was a good. Thanks, thanks for giving a, a like multiple information, like multiple projects you are showcasing, and a lot of information on that. That's I would like to uh, explore all this uh, slow by. Yeah, the main thing to remember is that it doesn't change anything to your day-to-day -day usage of Matic, and it supports more advanced use cases in the future, and so uh, it it helps everybody. Sure, sure. Uh, just to share your uh, slide link uh, in our chat box, so I can share it with that. If you have a slide link, uh, either by doc or slides. Um, um, I, I think I sent you the link, but uh, I will need to create, a, I think, a, a PDF or a slide share link. Uh, okay. To publicize okay. It, so I do that later. Oh, okay. sure. No problem. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Bye.